What's going on, this guy's star, and you know I got soul. So, just want to get started. Um, of course, you got the new single, Love Like Ours. Um, talk about the sound mm-hmm. a little bit and the song, because it's a little different for you. No, not really. I don't think it's different. I think we've done it um, many, many times before. But, you know, I think people are... Um, Anytime you do anything that is concentrated in one direction, people are like, it's new. And it's like, no, no, no. I've done many, many, many reggae records before. And um, this is just kind of one in the lineage. Um, this is uh, this is a uh, part of a new album, though. I will say that. And it's I'm excited about putting it out. I wanted to... I wanted to do something that, you know, I'm a very flow-based artist, like I kind of like roll however I feel versus what the direction is. And this has kind of been a long time coming, ever, like ever since I did come over almost over ten, like almost 10 years ago um, out here and, you know, had records like Sub Lover and, you know, so much out of the way and Magnificent on Shine, people were kind of like, so, a reggae album next, please? <laughs> you know? Cause it's kind of like, it's, it's definitely due to time, but... You know, so. Um, so I wouldn't say it's necessarily new for you, but it is kind of a departure from your last album, True Romance, which I thought had so many strong R&B records on there, Silly Girls, mm-hmm. one of them, Gotcha Love, another one. You know, what kind of made you decide to go in this reggae uh, direction this time around? Well, I had a record on there called Be In Love, too, and that kind of was the starting point. Um, I never stopped um, recording. I had a bunch of reggae sound of records around that time and it kind of everything after the album kind of kept, ended up feeling like this feeling like that so I just kept it going you know um, and it just kind of built up over the over the period of time I've been over the period of time I've been like away from the shots that that sound was kind of built up and it just made sense to continue with cool now I guess talk about this collaboration with Taurus Riley and how that kind of came together Well, we were start. We started. Like I said, we kept re- we kept working on for the last record, and I got around to this, the the kind of tail end, the bulk end of this record, and we went in with Oops, and it just so happened that Charles Roddy was out in the Miami at the same time, and you know they got in, they got in ahead of me, a couple of hours ahead of me. I got in there later, and uh, we got to work in, and I mean it, they asked me like who you want to work with, kind of thing, and. You know, you, you throw names out and you know he did on a set of the stick, but he was one that was kind of like, well, damn, yeah, of course I'd like to work with him, you know. Um, brilliant voice, amazing artist, and just is legendary. His, his songs are in a similar vein to what I do as far as, like, you know, classic 10 years down the line, you know, same kind of thing. It, it works. You know, it, it's, it, he makes great music. So it all it, it just it's just part of the course, you know. For sure. And I guess it's kind of cool because you're an artist, you know, you don't just necessarily do one genre, or one sound, you touch on multiple, um, you know, different genres, and it always comes believable coming from you. What do you think has made that possible? What's the key to that? Because, you know, you have a lot of artists who try different things, but it just doesn't yeah. sound right, but it's not that they go for a vi- They go for a visit, but they don't really settle. Um, I think that with me, it's, it's the truth. I, I'm not making this up. This is not- this isn't, I'm not visiting, this is where I've lived, you know, in, in all these genres I grew up, this is kind of default from where I, where I was born. You know, um, my background is I grew up with a West Indian um, stepdad, a West Indian real dad, and an African mother, <laughs> you know, and I lived in London my whole life till 27, so it's, you know, wham, and it's as well as Lovers Rock, and then it's like wham, and then it's like queen, and then it's like you know, moaning love and all of that. And then, you know, as I get older, it's, it's still all of that stuff. But then it's also Queen Latifah and it's um, Big Daddy Kane and it's Biggie and it's Park and it's, you know, it's Dipset and it, you know, and it keeps moving along. So I'm influenced by all of it and I love it. You know, I don't do it. This isn't um, a means to an end for me per se. This is actually a, a, a love affair with this, with this thing. This isn't, you know, this isn't, this, this is why I wake up in the morning. So, you know, it's believable because it's the truth. <laughs> you know, it's not. Yeah. You know, if I did a rock record, that would be equally as truthful because I love rock. You know, I had to actually sing for Bon Bon Jovi one good time, and that was fun. Um, I, I, I feel like he believes me too. <laughs> you know, yeah. so like, and I believe it because he's one of my favorite artists. 
So, you know, like, it's nothing, it's always from a space of truth. It's always from a space of truth. Sounds good. Now, with this direction that you're going with this with this album, of course, a little mm-hmm. more reggae. Um, obviously, True Romance, for you know, had a lot of strong R and B uh, influence mm-hmm. on it. Um, what mm-hmm. kind of made you kind of decide to steer away from the R and B a little bit? Um, this is the thing, and I and I'm gonna have to say it again, it's not anything different than what I've been doing. All of my records have had. Uh, either one to five reggae records on them or, or one to five reggae sounding something's on them. So nothing's different and nothing's new in this capacity. This isn't steering away from this. It's just focusing more on one particular genre. I started to work on this one because everything I was doing started to feel like it. We'd be making reggae records that are R&B sound and beats and it just didn't fit right. So we said, what are we fighting for? Let's just go ahead and make reggae records, you know, reggae dance hall. And, then, you know, and it's not purely that. It's actually you've got folk on it, absolutely got Afro beats, African music on it, because that's part of my heritage and part of my, you know, my core and my truth as well. And just as far as, like, subject matters, you know, I, if you look at my records so far, they'll give you the, um, they'll give you the impression that I'm not very good at love. <laughs> I'm not very good right. at anything that I sing about. So, you know, I kind of started analyzing myself and I kind of came to the conclusion that, well, man, it's probably what you learned, you know, probably the way you were raised. And I started looking at my mom's relationships and um, and my dad. And I kind of, you know, I spoke to them a bit and analyzed what they what they had taught me. And, it, you know, and I kind of wanted to give this album as a tribute to them to kind of thank them for what's the word, for winning me back over to love and helping me see the beauty in gray. Instead of it just being about black and white and, you know, I hate or I'm always heartbroken or everything's extremely happy or everything's extremely sad. But, you know, there's a certain amount of gray and um and uh, beauty and what's meant to be will be, you know, as much as that's yeah, the most for sure. unpredictable space to live in. I'm not very good at unpredictable. I'm not very good at um, the, the gray area. You know, so I just wanted to pay tribute to them um, <laughs> in the, in their space while I have them and while they're here. You know, like they say, give your flowers. I give them. This is, that, this is me giving them their flowers for raising me and you know giving me my life, no matter what it looks like right now. You know. Great. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, with your last album, True Romance, that was you know you going independent, kind of doing things your own way. I feel like. There were a couple of songs on there that people noticed, but the project in its entirety, do you think that got the attention that it deserved? It did what it was meant to do. Conqueror was the main single that everybody loved, and it did great. And, um, yeah, it did what it was meant to do. I don't ever, I don't know whether, I don't particularly um, judge my own body of work on success or whatever, because if I really sat here and did that, then I could talk about every album from Shine in different spaces. But, you know, I don't make records for that reason i make the records to touch people and i make and you know and the one and the record did that you know the fact that you know what it is and you called out four or five records off of it lets me know it did its job so you know that's what it is fair enough uh but of course being on a, being indie and you know it, it it is a challenge to reach everyone just because you don't have that that backing that you used to so being that you know, you've had a couple of stabs now. I mean, you've been independent for a couple of years now. Um, what do you think you've learned from when you first started as an indie artist till now that you think will help you along the way? Well, I started this entire journey in my in, as a, in my career as an indie artist. Um, uh, if, yeah. if you know anything about me, you know that I started um, off with my own very own label in 2000, no, in 99 as an indie artist. And I already, you know, so this is just part of the course. Ownership has its benefits. And it's just about putting in the work, you know, and that's what we do. And so, yeah, it's working. You know, that's about good. It. Yeah. Cool. So, of course, you've been in the industry for a minute now, and like we've always, like we, like you mentioned earlier, you've always tackled on different genres throughout your career. Do you think those fans from the beginning of your career are still here? You know, just because you've oh, been yeah, traveling? absolutely, yeah. The people that heard Shine and the people that, well, the beginning of my career, well, I should say, would start with 1980 in the UK. So the people that heard that record are still here and are super excited and tweeting me left, right, and center on uh, on Love Like Ours, which is a current single. The people that heard Shine as a start of my career in the US are super excited that I'm doing a reggae album because they're like, God damn it. Like, thank you, finally. You know, that's the kind of response I've been getting for it. 
So to me, though, and, and again, if we're talking about albums, that, yes, they, they love it, they're in it, they want to hear it. The people that were just along for the single and the American Boy, they'll come back around, or if they don't, that's fine, then maybe it's not their style of music. But again, this is not why, I don't do it for the, the sake of having the fans be the only reason, you know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't why I do this. Like, I don't, you know, I'm trying to understand who would do it for that reason, you know? And if they do, yeah. that's cool. I don't. Um, you know, that's all that I've got for you. Is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, on top of that, as far as the interview, um, I'm just happy that we're able to um, do this record and do this album, and people are excited to hear it. You know, this, this kind of, to me, is like my my David Bowie stretch, where, you know, again, he's one of those artists that would do different genres and kill it and go away and come back and, you know, and it would be a solid body of work, and I feel like that's what I do consistently. So I'm just happy that people are here and are excited to hear it, and um, I hope they get it. I hope they understand the whole premise behind it, and they help me understand where I'm coming from with it. And I hope they can love it, you know? Again, like, I want this album to do what it's meant to do, and I want people to just get fun and love and, and put more love in the world with this album. There's enough craziness going on. There's enough uh, you know, uh, negative and stuff to pick at in the world, so I just want to make sure that people get to understand, people get to feel some love, you know? 